What's up? Welcome to Gadget Class. Please take your seats. Today we're doing a full unboxing and video review of an eye gauging IP65 digital micrometer. This is a full vernier scale digital micrometer, meaning it can measure in uh, digital down to the hundred thousandths decimal place or the half of a ten thousandths. And you've got your full manual uh, vernier scale as well. So you can always man, uh, measure manually if you so desire. That's kind of a, a plus, and this is uh, kind of their, their mid-range digital caliper, or digital micrometer. They go one step above this, and they have a version that uh, has all the same features, but it has a uh, snap lock and a non-moving spindle, meaning the spindle doesn't rotate as you're tightening it. Um, it just moves in and out. So you can go uh, one step higher and get a... One, one step above this, and they also have the more entry-level product that does not have the vernier scale on there, um, but it measures just as accurately and down to the same uh, same decimal point. So overall, it's a really well-built uh, digital micrometer, fully metal, solid body, plastic covers there so that you can hold it without uh, feeling the cold cold steel between your your fingers there. Uh, friction lock. They have carbide faces on both the anvil and the spindle. That kind of helps you get a, uh, a longer life out of your digital micrometer. You're less likely to get wear, nick spurs, or uh, any kind of problems on the measuring faces there. So nice carbide faces helps for a long life and more accurate measurements. It does have the full vernier scale, so you can use it manually if you desire. Um, but the vernier scale only goes down to the ten thousandths, whereas the digital scale will go down to the half of a ten thousandths or the hundred thousandths decimal point. It is a ratchet stop, meaning when you get to the correct amount of force implied upon the measuring face, um, it's just going to start clicking like a ratchet. Um, there's there's a couple different types out there, friction stop and ratchet stop. Um, ratchet stop is becoming more common. Uh, friction stop will get to a certain point and it'll just keep turning with friction. Ratchet stop gets to a certain point and just stops turning and starts clicking. Um, it is built into the larger thimble, not the smaller diameter thimble like it is on some. Um, in terms of function, it is pretty much... Uh, the same as like your digital Mitutoyos, uh, really good uh, digital caliper, digital micrometer all around. In terms of function, you've got your on-off button that simply turns it on and off, and that's also your absolute zero function. When you have your faces fully clean and you're at your your zero point, you're just going to hold that down to set your zero, and that becomes your absolute origin point. If you're not sure how to properly use, how, how to properly clean your faces, make sure you watch my video on proper use and cleaning and care of your digital caliper and your digital micrometer. Uh, I've got that video in my uh, digital caliper roundup series of videos. It's video number two. Coming over to the right here, we have our increment mode. That allows you to come out here, say increment mode, and now you're measuring in relationship to a certain spot. That's good for uh, doing lathe work or uh, any kind of go no going on a part. Uh, set your increment mode to measure it in relationship to a certain size. And you can always come back to your absolute origin spot and it always knows where it is in relationship to zero. Um, that's also your inch to millimeter conversion button. You hold that button down and it'll convert between inches and millimeters. And then over to the right you have your data input button. This is fully SPC data capable. Um, on this particular model, they used a screw-on cover with a rubber weather-tight seal that keeps that uh, keeps moisture and dust from getting in there. That's how they maintain their IP65 rating. On the, the lower end model, you're just going to have a rubber flap that you peel back and put the data cable input. But in order to maintain that good weather proofing, uh, they put it, they went ahead and put a screw-on cable. So a lot of times you aren't going to be using the data input mode you can just keep that cover screwed on there um, or if you use it a lot you can just leave it off. Um, but that data input mode is a nice feature to have. Uh, allows you to automatically uh, put 
your measurements into whatever program you're working in, whether it's a spreadsheet or a CAD program. Um, all you do is hit your data button and the data goes right in. Really nice feature to have. Um, so in the box they give you your, your spanner wrench. Spanner wrench adjusts your vernier scale. They give you your ball adapter. This is, allows you to measure uh, things with a curved surface, such as the thickness of a pipe or a, round, uh, a rounded concave surface. This allows you to get in there and measure it at a, a tight spot rather than a full flat face measurement. They give you an extra battery. It does use the CR2032 battery, which is nice. And then they give you a nice little battery compartment door, uh, door wrench there for taking the battery out. So that's everything in the box. Really overall a, a nice feeling, well built digital micrometer. Uh, I don't have any complaints at all. It read perfectly accurately on both the vernier scale and the digital scale. So let's have some fun with it. Let's, uh, let's do some data input. Um, I'm having fun playing around with data input on these things. You're just going to plug it in. It'll plug into your USB port as a standard uh, HID device driver. Note that it does not actually come with the data cable. You have to buy that separately. So let's come over here to uh, CAD program. And uh, I showed the data input on uh, the digital caliper as well. I'm going to kind of do reproduce the same thing here and kind of show you um, what you can do. Uh, what I did in that video is I reproduced this socket cap screw with a digital caliper and data input. But since a, a micrometer cannot measure um, depth and it cannot measure internal width to that degree, you can get an internal micrometer, but nothing really that's going to measure something that small. That's what a digital caliper is good for. Um, so we're just going to reproduce this grossly so you can kind of see how the data input mode works. So we've got a part file open. Um, first thing you need to do is zero both the device and the data cable. And I probably got a little bit of dust on the, the measuring faces. Make sure you watch my video on properly cleaning those, uh, those faces. Make sure you're doing it right. Alright, so we're zero there. We're going to go ahead and hit zero on the box as well. This zeroes out both the box and the data cable. And we're also going to switch it over to inch mode. And uh, basically from this point on, this data button acts the same as that data button. Uh, basically either will trigger data input into whichever program you're in. And since it is a standard HID device driver, um, you can pretty much have it input the numbers wherever you have a text box. It can be a spreadsheet, it can be a Word document, or like in this case, it's going to be our uh, NX CAD program. So let's go ahead and start a new sketch on the X, Y plane. And then we're going to bring in our socket cap there. Normally I'd be doing this uh, differently, but for the camera I'm going to do it with two hands here. So we just get to where we ratchet stop. And then we get our measurement there, and we're just going to create a circle over here. Do that on the sketch origin. And it's asking us for our diameter. So all we're going to do is uh, import our data there. And... And we'll come back out. Get our, our sketch. Fit the screen. And there's our circle right there. Rotate, extrude, we're going to extrude the circle. In this situation, we're going to extrude it by the size of the socket. So I'm going to put my socket in there, and we're going to measure the actual size of the socket. And let's see if I can do this for the camera.
Looks like we're right around 0.2. So we're going to go ahead and come over here and we're going to input that for the size of the extrude. Like so. Now we can go ahead and come back out. And there is the base of our socket. Now, since with the digital caliper we could just come out here and measure the depth using the depth gauge of the threads. Since we're using uh, a micrometer, we can't do that. We have to do some math in our head. So we're going to go ahead and create a new sketch on the surface of that extrude. Like so. And we're going to create another circle. And I'm getting ahead of myself. This is going to be the diameter of our threads there. Like so. And we're just going to do our data input. Like so. And we'll finish sketch. Rotate. Extrude. I got a lot going on in this computer, it's kind of going slow. So now we're going to measure the entire width and subtract 0.2 inches. Put that in there like so. So we'll come over here to our extrude depth. And we're going to go data input. Then we're going to come to the end and put minus 0.2. Well, doesn't like my math there. So we'll just do the math ourselves. So 0.58345 minus 0.2 is going to be 0.38345. Enter. And there we go. And there we have it, the basic shape. Uh, go ahead and check out that other video showing uh, how to do that with the, the digital caliper with the data output. It actually goes uh, really smooth and easily. Um, I just wanted to give you an example of what, what is possible with data output. I could be doing the same thing in a spreadsheet. If um, I was testing a whole bunch of parts and I had to manually log uh, the sizes of a, a whole box of parts, um, this is where your data input mode would come in real handy. You'd measure your part, log it, measure your next part, log it, measure your next part, log it. Um, it makes those uh, kind of tedious, everyday uh, you know, factory things really really that much more easy. So that's it for this video. Uh, make sure you check out the video on uh, the other digital micrometer that I'm reviewing. And make sure you watch all the, all the videos in the Digital Caliper Roundup series. Those are some really neat videos. Um, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel.